Good morning and welcome to this week's Sunday Morning Coffee. So today I'm going to look at coastal processes, characteristics and landforms. and welcome back to Sunday Morning Coffee in 2021. So in today's video, I'm gonna go through coastal processes, characteristics and landforms. Now there's gonna be a part two to this video which looks at coastal management. So if you wanna swat up on your coastal management strategies, your hard engineering, your soft engineering, then check out the next video in this playlist. Here are the different features we're gonna focus on today. So we're gonna start on looking at waves weathering and mass movement. Then we're gonna move on to erosion, transportation and deposition. We're gonna look at headlands and bays, cave arches, stacks, stumps, wave cut platforms, and notches. And finishing off, we're looking at beaches, sand dunes and spits and bars. Now it's really important that we understand the types of waves we get at the coastline, because this can really affect the coastal landforms we see. So here are the main features of a wave. Now, when looking at the waves, we need to understand the main characteristics. So you wanna focus on understanding what we mean by the fetch, the different wavelengths we might see, the wave trough and crest, and then also knowing the difference between the swash and backwash and how that can affect the beaches. Now, it's also important to know the differences between a constructive and a destructive wave. Now, when we look at constructive waves, they have a longer wavelength, a more powerful swash, Therefore, this constructs the beaches and it deposits more material and we have a gently sloping beach. But when we compare that to a destructive wave, we see shorter wavelengths, a more powerful backwash. And this again takes sediment away from the beach, transporting material away and we tend to see steep beaches. Now, it's important that we recognise the differences between weathering and erosion. And this is a common misconception by pupils. So when we're talking about weathering, we're talking about the breaking down of rocks on the Earth's surface. Where when we're talking about erosion, we're talking about the breaking down of rocks by the moving sea. So there are three main types of weathering. We see mechanical weathering, which is also known as physical weathering. This is where rocks are broken down by the processes of freeze-thaw or salt weathering. We've got chemical weathering, which again, the rocks and minerals react to chemical changes, such as rainwater, and that is also known as carbonation. And lastly, we've got biological weathering. This can affect the coastline by flowers and plant roots, creating cracks in the rock. Over time, this can lead to mass movement, which is the downward movement of sliding of material. Now there are several types of mass movement. We often get referred to such as rock falls, landslides, mud flows, or slumping. Now we're gonna move on to erosion, transportation, and deposition. And these three processes are really important when we're talking about different landforms we see at the coastline. And when we're talking about erosion, that's breaking down of the rock at the base of the cliffs. When we move on to transportation, all that broken down rock and sediment and sand is then transported through the sea through the waves and then it is finally deposited somewhere whether it be a bay a beach or maybe forming spits and bars there are four main types of erosion you need to know so we've got hydraulic action abrasion attrition and solution when we look at transportation we've got traction saltation suspension and solution and one other term you might know relating to transportation of this material is the term of longshore drift and then we've got deposition, which again is where the material is dropped in a sheltered area. All these processes lead to these type of landforms that we see at the coastline. So let's start looking at erosional landforms. So we've got this headland diagram where we see the processes over time creating the different landforms. So we start off with those very small cracks and through this erosion, through this hydraulic action, that then opens that up and then eventually becomes a cave. After a cave, again, constant erosion happening over years and years, then becomes an arch, and then we finally see some sea stacks and stumps. We've also got wave cut platforms and notches. So similar to those other erosional landforms, the hydraulic action and abrasion that we see at the coastline hitting the base of the cliffs create more erosion, so we get these notches. The wave cut platforms, again, are 
the erosion of the top level of rock, but there's still a layer underneath, and this relates to the different tide levels we see. Now it's also important to distinguish between erosional landforms and depositional landforms. So again, we've just looked at landforms that are created by erosion, taking away of that material. Now we're going to look at depositional rate landforms, which is when the material and sediment is dropped to create these landforms. So we've got beaches, spits and bars are all examples of landforms created by deposition. We also see that the beach sand is blown inland by the wind to form sand dunes. And it's important that we recognize sand dunes are created by the wind and not by the waves. So that is just a quick summary of everything you need to know for the coastal environment section, looking at coastal processes, characteristics, and landforms. Now, when you've looked at all that stuff, you wanna be able to apply that knowledge to a case study. So the majority of the pupils in the UK have looked at the Swanage coastline in Dorset. For more in-depth information about coast environs, I would check out a website called timeforgeography.co.uk. Some of the videos I've put on there have been amazing and really illustrate all these different characteristics and processes that we've been talking about today. Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and please give this video a like. In the next video coming up after this, I'm going to be looking at coastal management strategies.